The U.S. intelligence community recently concluded that they cannot draw a hard conclusion on where the virus actually came from, mainly because the Chinese Communist Party will not cooperate with the U.S. And this means a couple things. It means, one, that the United States cannot really go after the Chinese Communist Party and claim that it is responsible for the release of this virus. And it also means that if this was, in fact, a Chinese-made virus or something related to the laboratories, man-made or not, we've literally let the Chinese Communist Party get away with murder, so to speak. And what does this mean going forward? Well, here to talk with us about this is Gordon Cheng. He's author of The Coming Collapse of China. And Gordon, it's a real pleasure having you on Crossroads. Well, thank you so much, Josh. So why don't we start by talking about this U.S. intelligence assessment first off. Then I want to go into China's biowarfare programs. Uh, what, did, what is essentially the conclusion from the U.S. intelligence community on the origin of this virus? The conclusion is that there are two plausible um, possibilities. And they use that word plausible. One of them is that it's a natural zoonotic transfer, uh, a natural mutation from a bat to a human. And the other is that it is a lab-associated incident, as they say. Um, but they also report, and, and this is obviously true, that China has not been cooperating with the international community, and it's been blaming the United States. And that, to me, means that the president of the United States has enough information to act. That's because China knows what uh, happened, and they're not telling us. And that alone is enough. But there's also a couple of other reasons. One of them is that, of course, China, wherever this disease came from, um, took steps to deliberately spread it beyond its borders. They lied about contagiousness. And while locking down their own country, they pressured other countries not to impose travel restrictions and quarantines. And we also know that they're working on a new generation of biological weapons that could be a civilization killer. So we put all that together. It means that President Biden must act. We must establish deterrence to prevent the Chinese from spreading the next pathogen. Wow, it's a pretty serious, a, a civilization killer. I want, I want to get to these bioweapons programs in just a bit. Uh, but I know in, your, in one of your recent articles you talked about, you, you framed the Biden administration not going after China with this if they choose to not do so as basically letting China get away with the crime of the century. Is that... Is that uh, an exaggeration? Is this accurate? How do, you, how do you describe this? Well, the crime of the century has so far resulted in 4.5 million deaths outside China. So yes, I think that that does qualify. And because of uh, what we know, that they deliberately took steps to spread this disease beyond their borders, that is intentional. This is an intentional causing of death. That's murder. Mm. That's crime of the century. 4.5 million people dead so far. Hmm. Now, on the bio-warfare bio point, uh, of course, bioweapon or not, as you mentioned, the Chinese Communist Party did weaponize this situation by intentionally spreading it around the world, uh, by closing travel within Wuhan, but keeping the borders externally open, meaning anybody looking to get away from the lockdowns and whatever policies the CCP would make uh, were able to flee the country. And they did use that to seed the virus to every part of the world. In terms of the biowarfare element, though, there's been a lot of different debates around China's biowarfare programs. China, the Chinese Communist Party is a signatory in the Biowarfare Act, but as previous reports have mentioned, they never even acknowledged, they never showed examples of them getting rid of existing biowarfare programs. They never even acknowledged the ones we knew they had. What is the state of the Chinese Communist Party's biological warfare programs? Well, we know that they're active because Chinese military researchers uh, talk about them openly in publications, articles, and books. And the one that is the um, one that concerns me the most is their program to develop pathogens to attack specific ethnic groups. In 2017, China's National Defense University, in its authoritative science of military strategy, actually wrote an article about a new type of biological warfare of, quote, specific ethnic genetic attacks. Now, Bill Gertz of the Washington Times actually has reported that American officials believe that the Chinese are actually working on such pathogens. And the Chinese themselves have been very open about it because for at least a half decade, a little bit longer, they've been actually talking about these ethnic specific pathogens. And that's why I talk about a civilization killer, because this could end up leaving China as the world's only viable civilization because all non-Chinese um, would be either sickened or killed by this. 
Now, I'm not saying that the Chinese have succeeded in um, de developing such a bug, but that's what they're working toward. And I know that they're putting a lot of effort into it, which means that we have to assume that sometime or another they will succeed. And because we haven't imposed costs for spreading COVID-19, they believe that they can spread the next disease without cost as well. I know a lot of people would question, what would the interest of the CCP be in, you know, as you mentioned, using a civilization killer on much of the world if they were to kill all, say, non-Chinese or people of any one specific uh, racial background, because, of course, that's targeting DNA strands or changing viruses to target specific DNA strands. I, I guess one, what, what, one big question would be, why would they do that? What would the interest be for them? They would be able to rule the world. We know that the Chinese have imported um, the notion of uh, comprehensive national power, CNP. And CNP is Soviet concept um, that um, is a collection of metrics to rank countries according to their power. And China wants to be number one. Now, there's two ways to get to be number one. One of them is you can strengthen your own country and every country should be doing that. And the second is you weaken everybody else. And I think that Xi Jinping, after he saw what the coronavirus did to devastate China, then decided that he was going to weaken everybody else. Because by weakening everybody else, he could actually increase China's CMP ranking. And that is the maliciousness of the Chinese system. Hmm. Now, with the idea of, doing, of making bioweapons targeted at specific DNA strands related to racial groups, I know a lot of people might say, oh, that, just, that sounds too sci-fi for me. It sounds too far-fetched. Um, how could we prove that that's a viable approach to making biological weapons? Well, all we have to do, Josh, is just to read what uh, Chinese military researchers say. We, we don't have to speculate about this. Um, I think that this would be a hard task to do, but we do know that certain um, racial and ethnic groups are more susceptible or less susceptible to certain pathogens. And so um, there is reason for them to um, think that they might be able to do this. And remember, China has been collecting DNA profiles of foreigners. The largest collection of DNA profiles of Americans, for instance, is not in America, it's in China. And at the same time, China has been enacting laws and strict rules prohibiting the transfer of DNA profiles of Chinese people out of China. And that is a, uh, could very well lead to in, uh, supporting these notions that they're working on uh, ethnic specific uh, pathogens. Hmm. Now, now, how is this possible? I, I, guess, I, I guess, what would you tell people in terms of how is, it, how is this possible? Well, it's just possible in that our DNA of humans is alike, but there are differences. And, and so, for instance, um, my wife comes from Hong Kong, and she told me, um, you know, during flu season when she was growing up, Chinese people would get flu, but it, it, either they didn't get it or it was very, very mild. But the flu did affect uh, the British and other foreigners in Hong Kong um, much more severely. And so that is something that is an example of what can happen. Um, and you can weaponize that. So China's working on this and they're devoting money. They're writing about it, uh, speaking about it, which means that we've got to be concerned that uh, they'll eventually find something. Now, as I said, I don't know what the state of their um, development is, but we do know they're working on it. Hmm. Now, you mentioned something interesting, which is that you said that China and the Chinese Communist Party, has the largest data bank of American DNA, even larger than what we have in the United States. I, I mean, how, how did they get this? How, how did they collect this? That's a great question. And they did it a number of ways. So for instance, they bought the company Complete Genomics, which had a large database of uh, data, uh, DNA profiles of Americans. Also, there are about uh, 13 or so, or 23 or so um, Chinese or Chinese linked companies that are accredited, uh, accredited to do DNA profiling and sequencing of Americans. So if you go to an ancestry company, um, chances are your DNA is being sequenced by a Chinese company. And the uh, third way they do this is they just hack. Um, they just steal. Um, and, and that's why I think that they were going after, for instance, health insurance companies and, and um, others. So. There's a number of different ways they can do this. 
Oh, and one other, and, and this we really should talk about. We have these technical cooperation agreements between American research institutes and Chinese ones. So for instance, Johns Hopkins has one. So there they get it above the board. But through many different ways, they're collecting um, the DNA profiles of Americans.